What's going on my Cardano friends? It is your friend Jack here and in today's video we're going to be discussing 11 ways that Cardano will scale in 2022, not in 2023, not in 2024, but in 2022. So with that being said, let's get into the video. Just before we get into this video, if you aren't already staking your ADA, I would say you should probably do that because you do get passive ADA on your ADA. It's never locked up and you can do so with the Jack stake pool. And if you don't know how to stake your ADA, there's a video link down in the description, which will guide you through that. Now, that being said, today we're here to talk about scaling. And as you may know, if you've tried to do any transactions in the past 24 hours, the blockchain loads at 92% for the last 24 hours. Right now, it's at 91%. And it has been a bit difficult to get things done in your usual sense. Uh, if you're selling or buying uh, NFTs, or maybe you're using a uh, Muesli swap, the DEX to buy native assets on Cardano, whatever you're doing, maybe you're sending a transaction to a friend. It does seem right now to be quite congested. So that brings up the question, are we going to scale? When are we going to scale? And how are we going to scale in 2022? So this isn't nearly as much of a problem, especially with huge dApps like Sunday Swap coming online next Thursday on the 20th. So during this conjecture, Input Output has put out a blog post. And the main core purpose of this blog post was to tell us how is Cardano going to scale in 2022? The question that we're trying to answer during this video, and we're getting there. And we're going to go over it. Not everything in this blog post or in this picture that I'm going to show you and read off of, I know everything about. I don't understand all of it, but I do think it gives a really good in-depth, uh, you know, short overview of what we're doing or what is happening behind the scenes and how there is a lot going on to help uh, with the demand that is going to be coming to the Cardano blockchain, especially with things like decentralized exchanges coming and much more types of decentralized applications along with them. So the first section that we're going to cover is the on-chain scaling. Things that happen natively on the Cardano blockchain. They aren't taken to the side chains. They aren't taken to the layer twos. They're on the blockchain. First thing that is going to be done for scaling, and it already has been done a little bit, is bigger block sizes. So transactions can be more there can be more transactions in a block if the block size is bigger. Recently, it has went up 8 kilobytes to 72 kilobytes, and that's a 12.5% increase. Further increases will be applied over time based on ongoing system monitoring and overall network health. Next, we have pipelining. This will improve block propagation times by putting together the validation and propagation time and the goal is for blocks to be propagated to at least 95% of the peers on the network within five seconds by reducing the dead time between blocks or the block propagation overhead. And this provides the headroom to make more aggressive scaling changes as mentioned above and such as increasing block size and increasing Plutus parameter limits so we can have bigger scripts and more abundant smart contracts. Next, the third on-chain way we are scaling Cardano is input endorsers. Input endorsers improve block propagation times and throughput by allowing transactions to be separated into pre-constructed blocks. This improves the overall consistency of block propagation times and allows for higher transaction rates. After that, we have another way scaling the Cardano network with memory and CPU parameters for Plutus. Memory usage is more efficient across the chain. Specifically, there are memory improvements in unspent transaction output handling or the UTXO, and stake distribution, live stake distribution and pools, and hash representation. All of these can be improved and better monitored. Then we have some really technical things, and these are Plutus scripts enhancements. Even a more effective usage of the powerful EUTXO model through smart contract optimization, including reference inputs, Plutus scripts can inspect transaction inputs without needing to spend them. This means that it is not necessary to create unspent transaction outputs simply to inspect the information held by an input. This just basically improves redundancy, at least that's what I'm getting out of it, and it will help basically help with a lot of the extra load on the blockchain caused by Plutus scripts trying to inspect transaction inputs. Next we have Plutus datums, and basically this makes it so datums can be attached directly to outputs instead of datum hashes. This simplifies how datums are used as a user can see the actual datum rather than having to supply the datum that matches the given hash. 
This one's also pretty huge, and that's script sharing. Plutus script references can be associated with transaction outputs, meaning that they can be recorded on chain rather than off chain, the scripts themselves for subsequent reuse. It will not be necessary to supply a copy of the script with each transaction, hugely reducing friction for developers and really just overall making it a lot less redundant and more efficient. Reusing scripts in multiple transactions significantly reduces transaction sizes, improving throughput, and reducing script execution costs. Next up, we have node enhancements. This is gonna be improvements that will help even distribute of stake and reward computations across the epochs, thus providing greater headroom for block size increases and also memory usage is now more efficient. Memory compaction reduces RSS footprint, don't ask me what RSS stands for, and memory sharing means we need less data instantiated node version 1.33 the latest version from january 2022 reduces peak load at critical points including the epoch boundary when usually before this and we're gonna we're kind of merging to that now um the epoch rewards your staking rewards are calculated at the end of the epoch uh, in between epochs so that does make a heavy load on the network, but that's gonna be basically distributed across the whole epoch now to make it much more efficient and also just not allow the load to go super high at that one point, but rather keep it more spread out. Yes, I pretty much just said the same thing twice, but I just wanna make sure we get it um, because it took me a while to get it as well. And the last on-chain scaling I mentioned in this picture that we're looking at here is on disk storage. This will basically, Sto be storing portions of the protocol state on disk. Nodes will need to hold less in memory, meaning that RAM constrained systems will be able to run nodes provided they have sufficient storage. And storage is a lot cheaper than RAM and memory will no longer be a bottleneck on scalability. This will enable significant growth in the blockchain state, allowing for a lot more people to run their nodes on all types of very cost-effective devices even less than a Raspberry Pi at this point, or I meant more cost-effective than a Raspberry Pi and less uh, you know, resource intensive. Now that we've looked at seven ways Cardano is scaling 2022 with on-chain methods, we can take the look at the last four ways that are off-chain methods, starting with sidechains. Sidechains are essentially a, another blockchain connected to the main blockchain. In this case, Cardano would be the main blockchain through a two-way mechanism or a bridge where you can send tokens or other digital assets from one chain to be used on the other sidechain and also bring it back over. There is a lot of sidechains being built on other blockchains and also Cardano, but there is also some Ethereum virtual machines sidechains being built on Cardano, including DC Sparks, Milk Omeda, and IOG's Mamba. Next up, we have the one and only Hydra. And yes, Hydra is all the buzz. You know, 3 million TPS, something like that. Uh, you know, 1,000 TPS for every stake pool. We don't know for sure, but there is some high hopes for this, and this will introduce isomorphic state channels, don't ask me what that means either, to maximize throughput, minimize latency, incur low to no cost transactions, and greatly reduce storage requirements. Hydra provides a more efficient means to process transactions off-chain while using the main chain ledger as a secure settlement layer, meaning that we're not sacrificing that security all that much, if at all. I'm not 100% sure. Don't quote me. Before we get to the last two, you have to remember, I'm just a kid in my mom's basement. I don't know that much. I'm reading off a slide and most of this is my interpretation. So I would also advise you to read the blog article. I'll leave it down in the description and do your own research when you can, if you can. Now, if this is your research you're watching right now, it's not the worst research, but just keep those things I've said in mind. Now let's look at the next form of scaling for Cardano and that is off-chain computing. Offloading some of the computation, for example, asynchronous contract execution, ACE, can drive greater core network deficiency and transactions occur outside the blockchain itself, yet can offer fast, cheap transactions via a trust model. So this method is not completely trustless, but it is another alternative for someone to benefit from using the blockchain without having to directly use the main chain. Lastly, we have Mithril. Mithril will allow us to achieve greater scalability and you need to address the complexity of critical operations that depend logarithmically on the number of participants. Mithril will improve chain synchronization while ma maintaining trust. The result, a multi-signature aggregation that is fast and efficient without compromising security features. Obviously, there's a lot more depth to each individual concept. 
By no means is this a comprehensive, complete, in-depth guide on the 11 ways Cardano will scale, but I do think it is a great introduction and that's why I made the video. Amongst all of what's happening right now, in terms of congestion, in terms of people getting ready for Sunday Swap, and in terms of what is coming, um, there is a lot of need to talk about what's coming for scaling. I know it's always about what's coming and not about what's here, but it is very soon going to be apparent that everyone's gonna be asking this question. How can Cardano scale? Is it scaling? Why is my transaction not going through? What is happening? Please, 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 devs, do something or whatever else. But Cardano scaling, there's always been a plan and we're in that plan right now of scaling the network. So with all that being said, I'm not worried. I don't know if you're worried. Just an idiot in my mom's basement. I hope you guys have a great freaking day. It's been your friend, Jack. See you in the next one. Peace out.